Hello everybody, I'm Prowl and I'm here to help you get started with Last Epoch today. I wanted to help you out today with the class selection process, the masteries of the game, just so you kind of understand what you're looking at here, how it all plays out, what choices are permanent, what choices aren't, and just kind of help you make a more informed decision when you go to pick your class. This isn't going to be like an in-depth guide to what every single class is and all their specs. This isn't going to be an in-depth guide as to the skill system and how everything like mixes together and works. Instead, I just want to give you more of an overview so you can kind of get started. So you can pick what you want to pick, and then that'll kind of lead into what I think will be my next video, which will be something a little bit more in-depth for like selecting your skills and understanding how the skill trees work and interact with each other and that sort of thing, okay? So first things first, when you get started in the game, you're going to have your choice between five different classes, and of that, each class will have three different mastery classes. Now, the class that you pick initially when you start the game, of course, that's final, like most ARPGs typically go, and you will pay, play as that like base class up until close to level 20. It depends on how fast you progress through the storyline of the game, but you'll be roughly level 20 by the time you get to the point where you get to pick your mastery class. When you pick your mastery class, that class is also final. Your skills, your abilities, your specializations, all of these things, those things are not final, but your class and your mastery class are. So make sure you choose wisely. Um, as you can see, you have five different ones here. I got them on the screen here for you. We have the Sentinel, which is like your basic like melee slash tank class. And as we go through and talk about these classes, know that they, they have a lot of flexibility in how they can be played. You could play this guy as a sword and board, holy knight paladin that has like crazy uber defenses and buffs, or you can play it as a two-handed like damage dealing void knight that uses dark damage to like decimate everything in its path i know the most about the sentinel because this is the class that i'm playing right now um but each class as you click through it'll give you a brief description of the class it'll give you some of their abilities that they have that they can unlock and you can look at that and and sort of base some of your early decisions on this information right here this should help guide you enough to give you a basic understanding of i might like this class it, it may or may not help you decide that this is the like the profession the mastery that you're going to go with but it'll lead you in the right direction and show you things that may possibly interest you so the same will go for the other classes here you have the rogue which has an option for a blade dancer which is going to be like a fast melee attacking class you have a marksman who's going to be able to master the bow and you have a falconer which is like a pet based class and was announced pretty recently i'll link you in the description down below to a video by zazarian on the like release information about this class it'll give you some basic info about how it works you then have the mage which can go like pure magic with the sorcerer can go pure uh, can go like hybrid melee with the spell blade or you can go with the rune master which takes a different path down the magic tree i'm not super familiar with the rune master but you can kind of read it yourself here and if it sounds something interesting to you maybe look up a class guide about it you then have the primalist this class can either go the route of the beast master where you can summon many different types of beasts as pets you can go with the shaman which is going to be more of like an earthy type magic or you can go with the druid which will be more of like a um a earthy type magic i guess as opposed to the shaman being more of a like elemental type would be maybe be a better way to put it and then you have the acolyte here the acolyte is more of like your dark magic dealer you can go the route of the necromancer to summon many different minions underneath you you can go with the lich which is more of like a like a death style class life leeching and there's a reaper ability there's like a lot of different cool things that have to do with more like death magic here and then the warlock which doesn't i don't have a tooltip here in game but the warlock is more of like your like debuff curse style class and you can actually learn a little bit more about these classes by going to a character builder or build planner um, i'm at the one at last tools.com there's also ones at max roll and other great sites out there that will help you kind of look through and figure out your classes as well now it can benefit you even from the beginning to at least take a look at the build planner and look through it so for example um, if i want to know more i have the acolyte actually um, selected right now if i want to know more about the acolyte i could have it selected go down to skills here 
and I get to see all of the skills that the Acolyte has, and I can kind of hover over them to get some good information about those particular skills. Even the Warlocks in here, what you see here, the, the Warlock is going to have, it uh, looks like a lot of like soul type magic. Um, curses and things of that nature. And while I don't recommend initially trying to jump into full build planning, you're, you're, you're going to get a little confused and not know what you're doing. If you try to jump into this right away, unless you have a lot of experience in ARPG games prior, in which case you may be okay. Um, but super easy here to go through, see what all the different classes have to offer in terms of their basic skills to help you decide which route you want to go. And you can even take a basic look at their some of their passive skills as well to get a feel for what types of things does this mastery class specialize into. More on this here in just a little bit. Back in game though, once you go to make your class, um, we'll make a test class here, I'll hit continue. Um, you have the option to choose either standard or hardcore mode. So basically softcore or hardcore. Um, one thing with Last Epoch and the way it works is just a little bit different than other ARPG games that I'm used to seeing the, do is their hardcore characters, once you die with it, it doesn't get deleted. It just gets converted to a softcore character, a standard character. Um, you do, I believe, if I've heard right, you actually still do lose like all of your stash items and that sort of thing. So there is still significant loss to dying. You can't just go in, play willy-nilly. If I die, I die. It's not a big deal because you, you almost have to start that character over in terms of your gear progression and that sort of thing. I, I'm assuming you probably keep some basic things, like some basic gear, like what you're wearing maybe, but you don't get to keep all of your stuff. So if you go the hardcore route, you could try it out. It's not a complete loss. Your leveling that you did isn't for nothing, but you are going to have to start over quite a bit of that character. So keep that in mind. Um, they do also have a solo self-found mode. Um, solo self-found means that you cannot party with anybody. You cannot trade with anybody. The only thing you can do is like move things across your other solo self-found characters. You can still do hardcore or softcore with solo self-found, um, but those things stay on your account and do not mix with your non solo self found characters in any way, shape or form. Now my class of choice is the void Knight, So I'm going to go ahead and just go into the void Knight really quick, just to show you what you're looking at once you get in game. And when you're in game, this is going to be your skills and specialization screen. You're not going to have anything in here as you go through and level. And again, I'm not going to go super deep into this. Check my next video for uh, more information about skills, specializations and, and how all this exactly ties together. But essentially, as you level up, you're going to gain access to more specialization slots. You're going to earn more skills. You're going to earn more um, passive points that you're going to spend in your passive skill tree here. And eventually, once you reach the point in your quest line where you get to select your mastery, it will then open up the ability to specialize in your um, Void Knight, Forge Guard, or Paladin if you're a Sentinel or your other masteries from there. The cool thing is you can actually put your skill points in any of the tr uh, passive trees, but you do have to put the skill points into the um, into that tree to get those particular skills. And whenever you select a mastery, you cannot unlock skills from another mastery, even if you spend those passive points in that. As a Void Knight, I can't spend points in Forge Guard moving this down and get these Forge Guard abilities. You do not get that level of crossover, but I do get access to some of the things here. Anything before this chain, if I wanted to cross specialize for things I think could help my character out. Also, keep in mind, once you get to this point and you pick your mastery class, it really at any point in the game, you can respec your points very easily. It costs you almost nothing, at least early game. I think it gets a tiny bit more expensive, but at, for the most part, it's, it's very accessible. You're free to change your character around as you want with some penalties involved, um, such as having to re-level up the abilities themselves. But the way that the game handles this is honestly, it feels really good. Um, giving you the freedom to kind of experiment and do what you want, not feel like you're locked into anything except that mastery class. Um, lastly, I would say, once you get a good feel for the game, like once you get up to that mastery level, even maybe start putting some points in and kind of trying things out, at that point, you may want to go over to your build planner. I've started one that I've been using for my uh, Void Knight, 
And once I really get a good feel for this build and feel like it's good for the late game, I'll probably even do a build guide on it for any that want to, to see it. It's really freaking awesome. But you might at that point want to go through, start selecting what your specializations are, start going through the skill trees for each ability that you select and kind of figure out where things are going to go. And then as you get to try those things out, you may find that you don't like a certain skill or ability that you've used. Like I'm probably going to redo my um, tree here for Rive, I think. Um, adjust things and then adjust them on your character. You can even go as far as selecting your equipment, selecting the uh, prefixes and suffixes on it, basically all the stats, and really plan out your character as you get into the end game. Um, something I highly recommend you do with a game like this if you really want to maximize your character. If you don't like all this stuff, there's going to be build guides that other people put out, builds that other people save that you can follow. But at least having a basic understanding lets you know what you're looking at, how it works, and maybe you can make some changes based on how you like to play. Anyways, I hope you found this video helpful and useful. If you did, maybe drop a subscribe down below and leave the video a like so more people get to see it. Um, I do live stream here on YouTube and on my Twitch channel at Prowl8413. So make sure you catch me. We are going to have Twitch drops enabled for the launch of the game. So if you want to earn some free cosmetics, come watch my stream on Twitch specifically. Otherwise, pick YouTube or Twitch. It doesn't really matter to me. But I hope to see you guys. You can come learn the game with me. I'm still learning a lot of different things. Or if you're already a pro at this game and you were just watching this video just to watch it, that's cool too. Drop it to the streams. Give me whatever like cool information you know um, and help me and the community that we have here and that we're growing learn the game. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. And you guys have a good one.